Jose Badillo is the next man in line to challenge this Prince Nassim Hamad for the WBO World Featherweight title. He's making his final preparations. He's gloved up, ready to go inside his dressing room. Well, he's been knocking people out in the serious business so far. I wonder if uh, our man inside that dressing room, Adam Smith, can just walk across and have a word with him. Watch the gloves, Adam. Nassim Hamid, England have qualified for the World Cup. Your mate Ryan Rhodes has won. Can you make it the full Monty? I've got to give Ryan Rhodes the utmost respect. Respect to England, do you know what I mean? But Ryan, bang, his next fight will be world champion. And what, what can I say? What about yourself? Yeah, watch me go out there and dismantle a man, knock that man clean out in the third round. You've been saying the third round, that's the one you want this time. I do it every fight and I come out and do it. Bosh, get down, lights. What about the people of Sheffield? People of Sheffield, big respect. I'm going to be embracing the right way after this fight. Uh, big respect to all the Sheffield crowd, and this is the full Monty. The full Monty. And this is like the finale for Sheffield, and I can't wait to give it them. Can't wait. Being the top of the building, Chris Eubanks and the rest of my undercard. Wicked. Hear the music. Hear the beat. Me. Good luck, Naz. Later. Little bit of needle, see? Chris Eubank on my undercard, I told you. Now, Jim, you know what it's like yourself to go to your home public. In your case, it was in Glasgow and the, the great emotional welter that comes down on top of you. Can it be a two-edged sword? I don't think so. I, I think Naz, uh, really, we have to look upon as being the best featherweight in the world. So uh, we're asking now how good a show can Badia put up. He is, he is a good opponent, he is, he is a worthwhile opponent, but really I can't see Naz losing. Certainly at this stage of his career, he's just about to become a multi-millionaire, big deals in America so pending. He'll, he'll be very serious tonight, he'll be very serious. How do you see it, Steve? Well, he wants to put on a good show tonight. He, he says it's his farewell to where venues in Britain and a, no better place than his own hometown. And uh, when he wants to uh, put on a good show, he usually does. So it's an extra incentive for him. And, and I think he will look pretty good tonight. Barry, last weekend we saw Crawford Ashley mm -hmm. eyeing a world title in the light heavyweight division and then forgetting that he had mm -hmm. to defend his European crown. Yeah. He lost it. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a danger that Prince Nassim Hamed will be already looking beyond Jose Badillo. There's always that danger. Kevin Kelly's here at ring said, Badillo, this guy can fight. No question about that. The big question is, can he box? Is he smart? And is he fast? Because if he isn't fast, he hasn't got a chance with Naz. Um, I like to think this guy's in good condition. Look at him. He looks, if he's prepared properly, which he looks like he has done, and can fight like the way we've been told he can, I feel sure this guy will give Naz one of his toughest tests so far. Barry, what are the main strengths that Badillo brings to his job? Well, Badillo's a banger. He's got 15 stoppages. Um, he's smart. He's not, if you look at him, he's unmarked. He's a handsome kid. There aren't too many marks on him. He's travelled. He has fought away from home before. Um, however, this crowd will frighten the life out of him. Have you no doubt about that? And he looked pensive at the weigh-in. And uh, obviously, Naz has got to be concerned about complacency, but uh, I think he'll blow him out. Great speculation if Prince Nassim Hamed does keep the winning run going here tonight. Where will his next move be? They're already talking about a date in the United States before the end of the year, and one of the possible opponents could be the former WBC world champion Kevin Kelly. And Kelly is in Sheffield this weekend. They've already met face to face. It'd be a great talking match between these two as well, incidentally. Yeah, I know. I'm afraid Kelly would beat him hands down and talk, and he's a he's motor mouth. He's a fabulous talker, but uh, I don't think he can fight like Hamed. He's a wee bit shop one. So, Kelly, I wonder what he'll make of Prince Nassim Hamid's performance in the ring tonight. He is at ringside and possibly, Jim, thinking that Nassim Hamid could be the man to send him into retirement as a rich man. Yeah, well, I mean, you have to fancy... I keep saying Naz is the best featherweight in the world. I don't think he'll lose until he starts stepping up through the divisions. He's not very tall, so as he moves up through the divisions, he's going to have uh, you know, some physical uh, problems. But uh, I fancy him against any featherweight, and that includes Kevin Kelly. But at least that would be a name, and it would make him a massive name in the States. First things first, though, Nassim Ahmed hopes to attend to business here in Sheffield, looking for a 28th straight win as a professional. The Prince is next. Part two of Judgment Night from the Sheffield Arena. 13,000 people packed in here, every seat sold. Chris Eubank coming later, one of the attractions. But Prince Nassim Hamed defending his WBO World Featherweight title against this man, Jose Badillo. Badillo looks just about ready to make his way from his dressing room. And let's join our master of ceremonies tonight, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the main event of the evening.
coming to the ring at this time, the challenger, Jose Badillo. Jose Badillo, 27 years of age, from Puerto Rico, 20 wins and only one defeat. A late substitute, but ranked number one by the World Boxing Organization, and his only defeat was at the hands of the long-reigning IBF champion Tom Boom Boom Johnson, who later lost his titles to Naz. This fellow, Badillo, had Johnson on the floor twice in the 11th round. He's also got some other pretty useful wins on his record. He's a southpaw. He seems as if he's a pretty good puncher, and his record of durability is such that he's never been stopped or floored. But we've seen other Nassim opponents with that kind of uh, record, and he's flattened them. But he's been supremely confident. There's a bit of a different mood about Badillo, I've noticed, than some of the other opponents pre-fight with Nassim. Yes, he has looked very, very confident. You know, he's a, he's a good-looking kid, no marks or anything on his face, and he's, you know, he's talking a, a very good fight and says he has a few surprises in store for Hamid. But certainly his record is a very good one, only that one loss in 21 fights. The challenger, Jose Badillo. He will be in shape as well, because he was due to have fought last Monday in California when he suddenly got the unexpected world title opportunity. Made the weight easy too, to underline that that wasn't just a lot of uh, PR nonsense. How does he look to you, Glenn? Well, he looks uh, a little pensive, a little nervous. He's got a smile there. It's a big, big moment. It's what he's going to be like when it all starts. The entrance of Nazim Hamed. That's a, a thing that seems to upset a lot of the fighters. It's, Nazim thrives on it. He looks clean to the crowd. I'm sure the crowd are going to love this. He's in his his home city and it's going to be an occasion. I don't think he will be phased. He fought in front of 136,000 Mexicans against a Mexican and beat the fellow in the second round. This, this is a, a very good fighter who's got good results on his record. And now making his entrance to the ring, Prince Nazim Hamad. Well, the crowd are on their feet even before Prince Nassim Hamed makes an appearance. These are his people. And while all this is going on, Badillo in the ring is dancing to the music. Phased? I think not. <laughs> I think he wishes this was all going for him. He's certainly making it look as if it's for him. This will be Naz's first appearance in his home city for three years. As always, the ring entrance will be a prolonged and spectacular affair. Because we've got a little bit of a battle of the showman going on as a subplot tonight. <laughs> who can upstage who between Prince Nassim Hamed and Chris Eubank later? Well, Hamed very much sees this as his show and wants everybody to believe it.
Well, it's an amazing story, isn't it? He grew up in this city as a little boy in Brendan Ingalls' gym, living above the corner shop, and now he's a multi-millionaire with a garage, a fleet full of fast cars. And the other day, the Prince of Qatar sent him a diamond watch worth £120,000. That's the sort of world he now inhabits. Difficult for a young man of 23 to keep his feet on the ground amid all that sort of stuff, but I think he does that fairly well. Yes, I, I think he does that. I think his family helped him. He, has a, he keeps his family around him, and I think they, they try and keep his feet on the floor. As you say, it is difficult, and that's always the danger with a fighter like that, is that they, they get overconfident, and, and this could be such an occasion. He's in front of his home crowd. He's got to do the work right. He's in front of a good opponent, and he has to go with go through with everything correctly. Well, the Sheffield public are enjoying this. And so is Padillo. <laughs> he is aiming to ruin their party. I think it's important for Badillo. He, he mentally he has to try and fit into this. Mentally he has to try and gear himself up and enjoy it. Be part of it, much the same as Steve Collins did when they came against Eubank. He fit it in. He did his thing as well. Took the play away a little bit from Eubank. I don't think Badillo's going to be able to do that. But in his mind, he's got to feel that this is his night as well. Nassim, who's won his last 15 fights by stoppage since his win here in Sheffield over Vincenzo Valcastro in 1994. Tonight he will be making his eighth defence of the WBO featherweight championship. He's made lots of money. He gives a fair bit, I know, to charity. And recently, you may have read the story in the newspapers, he brought a bag round to his mum and dad's house with half a million pound in cash as a gift for them. There's talk of him going to America to fight at Madison Square Garden against Kevin Kelly in December, but I don't know, life, especially in this sport, has a way of kicking you in the teeth at moments just like this. Certainly enjoying every moment of this. And here comes the ring entrance, which he says he invented, not Eubank. So this is the tail of the tape. Padillo, four years older at 27, he's a bit taller. He'll have a reach advantage as well, a slight one. Prince Nassim, bang on the nine stone featherweight limit. Padillo, a pound inside. First time of asking. Nassim has had more fights, boxed a few more rounds as well. But uh, as you can see there, Padillo has got a fair knockout percentage himself. And um, he hasn't been fighting pussycats all the time. These are the rules. Mandatory eight, no standing eight count. The three knockdown rule, that's three knockdowns in any one round, means an automatic stoppage. That is in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight. A bell will save the fighter in trouble only in the last round. And there's Sal, his dad. He does a good job, too, of keeping his son's feet firmly on the ground amid all the hoopla. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frank Warren for Sports Network Europe in association with ART, The Sun, and McCarthy's Corporation present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Featherweight Championship of the World.
This bout is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control. President and steward in charge, Mr. Leonard Nipper Reed. And the World Boxing Organization, President Francisco Parcarcel. WBO supervisor at ringside, Luis Perez. The timekeeper assigned is Colin Roberts. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10 point must system will be Stuart Winston, Victor Salomon, and Larry Hazard Jr. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Mike Ortega. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with the thousands in attendance, and the millions watching around the world. From the steel city, Sheffield, England, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black and silver colors, his weight, Eight stone, 13 pounds. His professional record stands at an excellent 20 victories, including 15 knockouts, with only one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ring, from Agadilla, Puerto Rico, the number one ranked WBO featherweight in the world. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing leopard trimmed with white and black, his weight, and even nine stone. In his professional career, he has captured two world titles while amassing a perfect record of 27 consecutive victories, 25 inside the distance by knockout. And he is considered by many to be pound for pound one of the best fighters in the world today. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the pride of the Steel City, Sheffield, England, here is the undefeated WBO featherweight champion of the world, Prince Nazim Hamid. Crowd are going absolutely wild, and we haven't seen a punch thrown yet. Will Naz give them what they came to see? Buena suerte. Good luck to both of you. Touch him up. Referee Mike Ortega from the United States. Haven't seen him in action much before. The last Puerto Rican to fight Prince Nassim Hamed was Daniel Elicia, and he's the only man ever to have Nassim on the floor. Badillo says, I am the best featherweight in the world, and I will prove it here. Let's see. Talk is one thing, action's another. What happens when he feels the power and speed of Prince Nassim Hamid's punching. That is always the acid test in any Hamid fight. Because fighters who've been resilient previously in their careers, many of them have just fallen to pieces once they felt that part. Hamid is very, very quick, hits very hard, but he was just carrying his hands a little bit low. That could well be a mistake. Watch Badillo's left hand. That was the hand that put Johnson on the floor twice in his previous world title fight. He lost it on points on the air in the end, but has won three times since that. It's a decent enough test this for Prince Nassim after one or two unsatisfactory opponents of late. Mohamed starting well with that jab, very relaxed, and he's just pumping it out and he's landing every time. And indulging in a wee bit of showboating as well. A little shimmy of the shoulders. It's a form of psychological warfare, of course, with him. 
chance of Hamid, Hamid ringing around this impressive Sheffield Arena with 13,000 fans inside. Rapier-like speed with that southpaw jab from Hamid. Hamid just toying with Badil. But a good left hand, that's the one we've got to watch out for from Badil. As if Nas has a weakness, it is that he sometimes lunges and leaves himself open to the counter. Also, as he lunges for that doubles up an opponent's power because he's he's throwing so much into that. Very rarely goes for it in the first round. For a man with his extraordinary power. He's only had three first-round wins in his whole career. The second's his favourite, but he predicts round three tonight. Padillo has got a bruise underneath the right eye, but I think he came in the ring with a black eye. Yes, and, uh, he came in with a little mark, and it looks as if it's just swelled up rather quickly. His trainer says he was born with it. I think I've heard it all now. <laughs> well, Hamid won the round behind his jab. But the danger always, despite his outstanding ability, is complacency, isn't it? Yes, a complacency and a little bit overconfidence. Yeah, he, he's showboating early in the round, but also he was using his jab to very good effect, using it from long range, and it worked well, and that just loosened him up a little. There's the shoulder shift. There's the attempted left-hand counter from Badia. It didn't really land. I'm not showing good reflexes there. He threw, lunged in with that big right hand of his own and then just turned away from the punch. Ten seconds, corners. They're already at work on that uh, right oh, eye. Birthmark. Of Padilla, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the birthmark. Yes. Round two. <laughs> Here's round two. Due to go 12, of course. Though... Prince Nassim has only been that distance once in his career in a European title fight three years ago. Hamed <laughs> now just speeding up, using the fast footwork, using the ring well, and just trying hard to use a fast jab, but it wasn't really connecting. Behind all this showmanship, though, there is a good professional at work with Prince Nassim. While he's doing all this, he's thinking, he's working out things about Badillo. Yes, he's looking for the angle, he's looking for the big punch. It always comes unexpectedly, but he can find heavy punches from all sorts of angles. He just has a way of making it look like a game. Often fights with that kind of smile on his face. And now he's telling Vadio, come on, then hit me on the chin. But that's all part of the Hamed plan. He's trying to draw his opponent in. He's trying to make his opponent make mistakes, and then he can capitalise on that. Well, he predicts round three, and he loves to make the predictions come true. It's almost as if he holds something back until that round. He's certainly fighting pretty conservatively for him at the moment. Yes, he is. He's using the, the jab well, and he's he's just trying to make Badillo think at this point. Maybe make a few mistakes, and every now and then just remind him that he's there with a, a quick hook. But he's, he's doing well. Nice, relaxed jab from Hamed. He's landing with it every time as well. Ominously for Badillo. He is not an elusive target. Watch the use of the elbow, says the referee. Badillo a bit concerned about that too. Called on the counter again, the phenomenal speed is something that the Puerto Rican is finding hard to come to terms with. Great jabs, those from Hamid. Real ramrod weapons, like a great big telegraph pole coming out and hitting you in the face. And just as he was doing that, there's a big intake of breath from Badillo. 
Well, he'll have known about Hamed's reputation because he is known, of course, and revered throughout the featherweight division. A right hand does land there from Badillo. Left himself open, Hamed. The defence is all reflex, isn't it? Hamed's defence. Yes, very much so. He, he, he lurches in but turns the shoulder well. And another good round for Hamed. So two rounds gone, and we're coming up now to his prediction round. So here's what uh, Prince Nassim had to say about all that. I'm planning on um, a nice third round KO because three rounds to me uh, is giving the Sheffield public what they want to see. So that's, uh, that's what he says. He's often made the prediction come true, but I think really he just has to concentrate on winning the fight anyhow, doesn't he? There are so, so much is on the line for him now with this American adventure. It really is, isn't it? but I think, you know, obviously that's in the back of his mind, but he's very much the showman. Obviously, winning is all important, but you can guarantee he's going to try and make this prediction come true in this round. Ten jabs landed, good ones too by Hamid in that last round. But Dio did have success with the right hand. Here's the third round. I think both of them know that this is the round that Hamid predicted. Let's see what happens. You'll go right through the gears here, Hamid, I'm sure of that. And already he's landed with two good punches, the right and the left. He's got a lot of respect for Vadillo. He watched videos of him and said he thought he was among the best opponents that he'd faced, judging on that video. Ooh. Really got some meat into that right hand. Vadillo's on the defensive. You get the feeling he knows that... Uh, a big attack from Hamed is on its way. Hasn't happened yet. It's a bit like the phony war. <laughs> Hamed taking his eye off the deer once or twice to catch the eye of somebody at ringside and just looking outside the ring. Dio, you sense, is maybe just waiting for one moment when he can explode a counterpunch and test Nassim's chin. Yes, he's been very cautious himself. He's not foolish. He's not running in to Hamid, trying anything silly. He's just trying to play Hamid a little bit of his own game and make Hamid lead to him. Still just working almost exclusively with jabs. And he does have his way of throwing other punches from crazy angles, particularly that kind of corkscrew type uppercut you saw it attempted there. There's a left hand, that's rocked for Dio. Then a right as well. He's got 45 seconds to make the prediction come true. Oh, oh cracking right hand. He's starting to move up the gears here, and that's good stiff right hands going in. He's picking the punches excellently. <laughs> Terrific work behind that southboard jab tonight from Hamid. I've rarely seen him work behind that so well. Yes, you maybe think he's, he's using the jab, working the jab so well, because he has got respect for Badillo. Looks like a bit of blood somewhere around the left eye above it of Badillo. He's looking, beginning to be marked up around the face. You cannot take jabs like this and seem to get away with it without facial damage. Well, he didn't do it inside three rounds this time. But I think, to be absolutely fair, Prince Nassim Hamid took the view that, hey, there's a professional job to be done in there. Never mind the prediction here, this fellow's OK. The cut looks quite bad, actually. Yes, he is starting to bang the deal up, and it's all from that jab. The jab has worked wonderfully well. He's threw it as a straight punch. He's also turned it up into a, an uppercut, and it's it's landed almost every time he's threw it. Marcos Maldonado, the head man in the corner, 
They're working away. There's a cut underneath the right eye, and I think there's another cut above the left for Badillo. But the work in this round was all good from Hamed. The jab was excellent. Badillo, I think he realised what round it was, and he tried very hard to be on the defensive. Seconds left. Well, 18 of Hamed's victories, 18 out of 27, have come inside three rounds. So Badillo's done better than most already. But he's scarcely existed in this contest as an attacking force, as yet, anyway. He's already shown a bit of resilience, though, hasn't he? Yes, he's had to take some, some good punches, but he hasn't really... Hamed, as yet, hasn't really unloaded on Badillo yet. So I don't think he's really felt the, the full force of the Hamed punches. Just for once, Hamed was out of range with a jab. In its way, this is a nice, cool, composed display by Hamed, isn't it? Yes, it is. There's, there's nothing really erratic. He's, he started with good boxing, just starting to, to pick up the pace a little bit. But you're trying to go with him, but made to miss widely by Hamed. Are we going to see a push from Badillo? He knows he has to try something differently. Hamed showing tonight that he can box a bit too. There's always a danger with ferocious punches like him that they just always go for the blast out and then become psychologically affected when they're in a longer fight. Yes, well, it doesn't look that way at present. He looks very relaxed. He's boxing well behind the jab and there's very little coming back from the deal. Patient Hamid here, waiting his chances, trying to work his openings. Impressive, really. Reminds me of his performance against Tom Johnson. As you can tell, he's got a good deal of respect from the deal. Another ramrod jab. Of sickening power. Yes, he turns that jab into an uppercut from long range very well. Very hard punch to defend against. He's getting marked up, busted up around the face. Now, Badillo is being picked apart, just bit by bit, like a slow water torture, only far more painful. And Hamed, look at look at the way he's. Trying to eyeball Badillo, psych him out. As if to say, you were talking a big fight at the press conferences, this is the reality. That's right, and it is the reality at this point. It's all Hamed. He's boxing very well. Good punches going in there. But his jab has, has still worked so well. That's been his, his best punch. A few of the punches just missing. You know, just trying to come back with his own right hand, but there's been very little on the offences, on the offensive from Badillo. He's been very Ten much a defensive goals. fighter. Look at that, 31 jabs landed to eight by Badillo so far. And I bet he's only thrown about 33. This is the fifth round then. Now it looks here as if he's decided that he's going to get the argument finished. Now, that's not a knockdown, just wrestled Badillo down. A lot of the crowd sitting at the back thought it was, hoped it was almost, but Badillo is still there. But I think there's a slightly dispirited look about Badillo just at the moment. Well, he put so much into that, Hamid, that 
and momentum almost sent him crashing it into Glenn's seat. <laughs> that would have been a surprise, wouldn't it, for both of us? That would have probably hurt too. <laughs> That's how I've got it at this moment. Everything so far to Hamed. I don't think as many would argue with that. Huge jab. And now he's going through the razzle dazzle. He's dancing while they're clinching. Hamid, watch the uh, use of the shoulder. Again, that right hand working so well, and this is a very confident Hamid. Now look at this, I think he's trying to do all this for the Sheffield fans. He's playing to the audience, trying to taunt for Padillo, who's taking all this. Once or twice in the past, Hamed has taken some stick for trying to humiliate his opponents in the ring. And he certainly went over the top against Belcastro a few years back. But I don't know, where is the line between the kind of thing Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard used to do and it becoming bad taste? The mind games are part of it, aren't they? Very much so. He's, he's trying to dazzle Badio with his antics as well as his, his speed of hand, speed of foot. And Badio just doesn't know what's going on. He looked a little bit of a dejected fight as he went back to his stool there. Well, that was accidentally a two-minute round, we reckon. That was a minute light, that round. Well, I think even the timekeeper's getting a bit distracted by the razzle-dazzle of Nazim Hamed. I'll tell you what, Padillo was glad it was a two-minute round. I think he was. There were some good punches gone in there, but he just wanted to... He's trying to impress. He's trying to give the, his Sheffield public a show. And Padillo just does not know where the punches are coming from. Well, this was something really from the dance floor, wasn't it? The crowd reacted to it. They enjoyed it, and he played a little bit more for them. This is all part of his fighting makeup. Sixth round, touch gloves at the start of it. There's plenty of respect from Hamed. I think he's shown that already for Badio. He rates him, I think, a few notches above some of the other people he's been in the ring with of late. Well, he still hammered books most of the fight at long range and used his speed, used his reflexes. He hasn't been too keen to go in and really mix it up and look for the knockout. He's just, just bit by bit trying to take Badio apart. <coughs> oh, there's that uppercut, which is not really an authentic uppercut. It's the corkscrew one. Like it's travelling up a winding staircase. There's a solid left hand and the jab. Ramrod right into the face of the deal. The deal just can't do anything with him, can he? Not yet. No, he can he find an answer? It's all very much one way traffic. You just feel as if the strength's starting to drain away from the deal. Marked up around the eyes. Must be feeling a bit dispirited and dejected. I wonder what's going through his mind. He won't have faced anybody like this before. In that respect, Hamed is unique. Right, left hand gets through from Badio. A rare success for him. That was a good shot that rocked the chin of Hamed, but he... He took it well, and I think he may just get down to business a little bit more now, Hamed. And then a right hand from Badio. Just reminders to Hamed. Inside the last minute of this sixth round. Oh, it's a great right hand as well, then the left to the body. But I told you this guy had never been stopped or floored for Dio. And I think a lot of opponents would have fallen apart by now under this barrage. Because every, even the jabs are thrown with evil intent, aren't they? 
Yeah, but every now and again, Badu just in this round threw a couple of punches just to remind Hamed that he's still there and st still has to be a little bit careful, a little bit wary what Badu can do. Last few seconds of the round. Badio beginning to throw a few more. And there's another huge jab. And so it goes on. He's winning everything. Nassim Hamed. Badio certainly will not have won a round so far. But only in world title fights anyway. Steve Robinson, Manuel Medina and Tom Johnson have lasted further than this with... Prince Nassim. Mohamed still looks very, very cool. There he tries that long-range uppercut again. Doesn't quite connect that time, just, just catches the edge of the chin. But there's that good left hand over the top from Badio. But Mohamed took it very well. Is there still one or two people who question Hamed's chin because of the Alicia knockdown? But that is the only knockdown he has suffered, and he got up and in the next round finished the job. But um, who knows? Second round, round seven. This is the seventh round then. Into the second half of the fight. And so far it's basically just been a kind of boxing masterclass really by the champion. Yet more damage to the face of Padillo. He certainly wasn't born with all those cuts. No, oh, and a success at 46% for Hamed. Ooh, right Nine. hand from Badio. 92 punches. Left his chin out to dry a bit there, Nassim, and the reflexes didn't get him out of that one. But when Badio does land, he's taken the shots. Fair and square, no problem. Kale is still obviously a little worried of Vidio. <laughs> Left hand there, and the referee was trying to leap in just to have a quick word. Hamid threw another one. Vidio, not too happy, took another big left hand. This fellow is durable, but even he was wobbled by that. Then a right. Blood coming from his nose. This could be the finish now. They want to stop it. Vidio's corner want to stop it. They've rescued him. They don't want him to take any more of this. And Prince Nassim Hamed retains the WBO Featherweight Championship for the eighth time. And I thought that was one of his most impressive performances. Yes, I would have to agree. I thought he was very careful. He started with the jab so well as a straight punch, mixed into an overcut. And he just took his time. I think he realized that Padillo was a good fighter and could come back with a good punch. But it was a, a very good performance from Hamed. He just took Badia apart bit by bit. It was just about punch perfect, wasn't it? He got caught two or three times, but uh, he hardly wasted a shot, did he? But it's amazing when you say he got, he got hit two or three times against the number one contender in the world. And there's the, there's the stat to tell the story. 47% success rate against 19% for Badia. Such a lot of punches land, 103 to 27. 16 in a row by knockout or stoppage. He's still the champion, and next he wants to conquer America. And we're 90% certain that his next fight will be in Madison Square Garden against Kevin Kelly, the former WBC champion, a New Yorker. And that would be a pre-Christmas happening if it comes off. Here's the end again. I thought that the corner were, were good here. They were looking after their man. He took a lot of heavy punches. Look at his face. He's, re he's really beat up at this point, and I thought that was a good gesture from the corner. They've got to look after their man. You know, that's their interest. He's there. He did the best job he could. He put up a good, stern test, but he was outclassed from the very beginning. His corner recognised it, and they weren't about to see their man flattened, and I thought that was very good from their corner. Compassionate work by the cornermen. 
and professional work too, because there'll be other nights for Padilla. There was no point in letting him take a prolonged beating. He was being outclassed and busted up a bit. Uh, Ryan Rhodes, who's already won tonight, and it's Johnny Nelson as well, and Nassi makes it a Sheffield treble. So these fans are enjoying themselves, having seen England qualify for the World Cup as well. It's some night here, I tell you, and we've still got Eubank to come. Ladies and gentlemen, following the indication from the red corner that the challenger was no longer able to continue, referee Mike Ortega steps in and calls a halt to the bout. The time, one minute, 37 seconds of round number seven. The winner, and still the undefeated WBO. A round of applause for the game challenge of Jose Badillo. So Nassim Hamed makes it eight defences of this WBO World Featherweight title. Can he go on to dominate this division? Will he step up to a higher weight division? These are questions for the future, but for tonight, the Sheffield fans have responded magnificently to this first appearance by the Prince in front of his hometown crowd in three years. I thought it was a very interesting fight. Barry? I thought he was absolutely brilliant. He showed little respect for the guy's ability. And remember, the deal was a world-class fighter. He's only been beaten once before, and he just treated him like a sparring partner. It was a fabulous display. He just totally outboxed him. He, his, his boxing was brilliant. He had respect for the guy, but uh, he became so bold in the in middle rounds and uh, so, you know, such scant regard, little regard for his power. He got hit a few times, but totally unmarked, and uh, it gets better and better, this kid. It gets so much better. It's remarkable just how good he is. More from Barry McGuigan, Steve Collins and Jim Watt also in just a few minutes, but I think Prince Nassim Hamid is going to have a word with Ian Dark at ringside. Well, here he is, he's still the champion. Barry McGuigan has just described that performance as brilliant, Naz. Your thoughts about it, please. Well, uh, I think he's telling the truth. Smart, smart, smart. It, it seemed, I mean, punch perfect, didn't it? I mean, you used the jab so well there, you, you looked composed. I'm always composed. I box, I box brilliant tonight, I don't care what anybody says. Do you know what I mean? I did the business and I did it in style. I bossed him up. I did predict the third round, so to whoever who lost their bets at the bookies, I'm really sorry, but you win it back on me, don't worry about that. But, uh, can I just say, I knew the full Monty in Sheffield. I love Sheffield. I knew they were going to turn out. I knew! I knew you were going to turn out. And what can I say? Respect to the food, Gwen. Respect to the food, Maria. Uh, everything just went perfect for me, and what can I say? They turned out the crowd, they gave me a buzz. I performed, the, the finale was there. I'm the top of the bill, uh, as you know, it's on my undercard. Big respect to Ryan Rhodes, uh, respect to Adidas, and uh, big respect to that telephone call. What about um, Badillo? That's the first time he's ever been stopped. I mean, you seem to just pick him apart, really, bit by bit. Was that the, the, the plan? Well, you saw the school for yourself. End of the day, I'm not just a puncher. Uh, end of the day, I've got a wicked technique. It's, it's one in a million. I know I'm the best in the world. There ain't a featherweight out there can take that pain. What can I say? I know I'm the best, and even though I did predict the third round, I did use my head, and if I, if I realised that it could take him out in the third round, what a great boxer he was. He was strong. Believe me, now I know how he dropped Tom Johnson twice. Uh, and what can I say? Uh, from Puerto Rico, respect to Rhodesy, man. Now then, all the talk is, of course, of you conquering America next, fighting Kevin Kelly. I know he's here at Madison Square Garden. How excited are you by that prospect? I'm so, so happy that I'm going to get the fight, because I reckon Frank Warren's the best promoter in the world. He always does his job. He pulls out the opponents. I take him out. 
Uh, what can I say? It's my eighth defense tonight. I ain't getting beat, basically. And Kevin Kelly's here tonight, and he's seen, he's seen the skill of the Prince and the strength and the ability and the accuracy and the speed. Oh, gosh, you know I'm the best in the world. Have you got a message for Kevin Kelly? He's sitting about seven rows back. He doesn't want to steal your thunder by coming up here and sharing the interview. You've got a message for him. He's listening. No, no, he does want to come up here. Here he is. Here is Kevin Kelly. Have a sit down, Kevin. Here you are. Let's have a chat. Let's have a chat. Now then, what, what, what have you got to say to him now? Can I just say, he's right in front of me, and I can honestly tell him that I'm going to knock him spark out. I'm going to knock your spark out. What do you got to say to that, Kevin? Relax. Relax. Relax, baby. You relax. You can't get knocked out. Let me tell you. In your hometown. Nah, you had a great performance. At New you're nice, York. You're nice and hyped. Madison excited, Square Garden. But I'm the real I deal. I can't wait to beat you up. I'm the real deal. I I'm can't looking to wait. your face, and I'll tell you the face. Go on, go on, go on. Look I'm at going me to smoke your boots. We'll see. We'll see. Because I am the best featherweight in the world. We will see. So I'll take you out like the rest. Hey, what did it say? You can give it all the people hype. Because I know the respect is there. You can give it all the hype in the world, and I can. Yo. But we know the best featherweight in the world is. And I'm gonna I'm looking you in your eyes. This and I'm is your you house. Not... Kevin, Kevin, just seriously, let me just break this up a minute, Naz. Just tell us what you seriously think about this fellow as a fighter, because everybody's saying this is the best featherweight in the world. New York accent. Tell him. Well, I feel like this. Calm down. I. I feel like this. You know, I came to uh, England before. I watched Niles fight one time before Tom Johnson. I said they would beat Tom Johnson because the styles make fights. I feel like this. He's a good fighter. He feels he's a good fighter. Hey, if he didn't think he was a good fighter, he could not do the job. I feel I'm the best fighter. He feels he's the best fighter. I was gonna say, let's party. I'm a party crasher. I'm gonna let down the crash this party. There are not going to be too many spare seats at Madison Square Garden. Let's bring in Frank Warren here, because I'm talking about this and everyone is as if it's already definitely signed, sealed and delivered. Is it? No. <laughs> it's not signed, and sealed and delivered. We're going to talk to Cedric Kusher tonight, who's the promoter of, uh, of Kevin, and we'll see what we can do from there. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're looking to go to New York on the 19th of December, Madison Square Garden, and show Nez what the Brits can do, what the Arab world can do. He's going to go out there and he's going to take America by storm. Because there is a bit of a Brits can't fight thought, isn't there, in America, even despite what Lennox Lewis did last weekend. Yeah, but let me tell you something. This is a Brit who lives in Britain, and he's going to go out there and he's going to go and do the business. He's going to go to America, and I'm telling you, he's going to, he's going to create something they've not seen before. It's going to be a bit of a pre-Christmas happening. Uh, Brendan Ingle, the trainer, wants to say something. That's unusual. Go on, Brent. He books brilliant and great Sheffield turning out and coming home from all over England and Britain. Thanks, great. And to Frank Warren and Richard Cayburn and all the people in Sheffield, appreciate it. There we are. I think we're already uh, into the ticket selling for Madison Square Garden. Not that it'll need a lot of ticket selling, I don't think. Back to you, Paul. I know, I know that, I know that. I know that. Kevin so Kelly and Nassim Hamad. <laughs> they could talk between now and Christmas, couldn't they, even before the fight starts? So thought it might be like that between them. Anyway, he's done it again in Sheffield in front of his adoring hometown public. But even though he is a great showman, next up it'll be a man who maybe, even now, can teach Prince Asim a thing or two.